So I've discovered another little neat um, tool that I was wondering what it was all about, experimented with it and found out that it's actually quite quite cool to use. So I'm going to just create a starting place. Um, I've done a tutorial before using certain other tools, which was the compound explaining how the booleans work, these areas, but I'll just cover it briefly and how the compound tool works and show you how this new tool that I want to express to you works in a similar way but different. Okay, so always a weird thing when people say it's similar but different. Okay, so I'm going to give this a nice maroon color and then I'm going to take what other shape could I have, maybe this square shape through here and give this a, a rather sort of bright orange color. So the different tools that we had to use where we could join things together or subtract them from each other were often these what I call boolean tools here. Um, so if you grab both of these objects and as per my normal convention my layers palette and a few other stuff I keep on the left side here. If we join the two here we have the ability to add these two together um, and I'll just go through it. There we can add but then it becomes destructive and it drops it down into a one layer and that's a single curve. The only way to edit beyond that is to go into the node tool and to then tweak these areas. And I go control Z just to get back there. The other way is to subtract. Then we have this feature and again single layer curves nodes are the only way to edit. So these are kind of destructive ways of editing. Same with the intersect. Um, X or R and then divide. What divide does it literally cuts up everything into pieces. So I'm every time I change I'm just going control Z to uh, step backwards from that. So those are the common tools that we are familiar with. Then there was another tool I discovered which was quite interesting which is the compound tool where you grab both of these and it does what these two tools do, these booleans, but it's non-destructive in the way it works. So how do you get to it? You go to the layers menu and you'll see it says create a compound. What this does is creates a compound of the structures that you have selected. So if I go create a compound, you look on this side, it says compound, and within that compound the object on top will be there, the object at the bottom will be there. Now by default if you look here, uh, you'll see this little icon here next to the tick it looks very similar to what we have on top here, and it is, um, but it's a non-destructive way of getting to that same place, but not flattening the object in the process. So if I click here, you'll see that it gives me intersect, gives me subtract, X or R. Okay, so that's the power of using a compound, in that when you get to that point, you can go subtract there, and then you can work this object as an independent object. So compound is very powerful. But even beyond that there are some other features that probably the next tool that I'm going to explain to you which is why this what this video is all about is something that is in you know if you've been working in Photoshop or Illustrator before you used to use these blend modes and they used to I mean you use it often to create uh, two objects on top of each other multiply color bin and all that. But in Affinity Design, it's got one interesting one right at the bottom, which seems to be in a category of its own called Erase. And let's have a look at that. So I'm going to just uh, go to the History uh, tab here and just go right back to some sort of reasonable space where we were originally. Now look at this particular setup. Now I'm going to just make this uh, rectangular area a bit smaller so I can accentuate what the effect is of it. So this is what we call a blend mode. With this erase blend mode what it means is if we attach a blend mode with the erase feature onto this rectangle on top, this orange one, whatever the shape is it will use that shape to cut out everything that's in the layers below. Okay, It will cut everything. If there's a hundred layers it will cut right through it and it will make that area transparent. The only place that it will be restricted to not cutting to is if you put that rectangle 
and you give it a erase blend mode and you put it in a group it only then functions in that group and anything outside that group it doesn't have an effect on and I'll show you that so if we go now we're on the rectangle and if I go down and I go on to erase and I select that I've chosen the erase blend mode now and literally you can see that when I move it around it's cutting right through now I'm going to go to the ellipse and I go control J which creates a duplicate of that and the one at the bottom I'll maybe change to say this bright greenish color but as you notice here you can see that we've got this maroon circle and underneath it is the green one but we're not seeing the green one it's because this rectangle is cutting through all of these so if I switch off this maroon one we'll see the green one underneath switch it back on if I take this rectangle and I move it this way and I take this maroon and I move it this way you can see we have the green which is right at the bottom we have the maroon and this rectangle which is here but with the rectangle because we've got it as a erase mode you're seeing absolutely nothing the only function it has is to erase everything that's below it that falls under the shape so if I move it like this you can see what effect it has it's cutting through everything that's over there okay so this is the power of it you you don't have to convert this to curves now you can work with this object um, this object could be any shape I could come I'm going to delete this and let me put in a star and just put it here and what you notice is the star area is just taking on a normal color but if I go to that layer and I choose erase as the blend mode look what happens it cuts right through the ellipse right through that ellipse and if I put a let's say another ellipse or even a, another square if I'm going to put that oops uh, let me say I'm going to put that square over here now that square I'm going to let me just drag it to the bottom so it's right at the bottom so I have ellipse ellipse and a rectangle this star area is cutting through all of them now I'm going to show you if you want this to be filled with a color so you want it to cut 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 and then stop at a certain area you will have to group the area the effector the thing that's doing the erasing with the other stuff that it's cutting through and the one that you don't want to cut through has to be outside that specific group so let me just show you I'm going to uh, create another rectangle I'm going to go control J and this bottom triangle I will make it say black but you're not seeing it because it's behind this one so I'll, let me just make this uh, one a little bit smaller here let's go to this one make it a bit smaller and you'll see the black I'm just making this uh, purple one a bit smaller so you can see that there is a black one right at the bottom and it's just extending beyond there but we're not seeing anything through this cutout here because the cutout is going through every single thing now let me show you how we can get this cutout to go through but not through this last one I'll take everything above here which is the star which has a an erase blend mode it's cutting through these here but I'm going to group all of them together so the star will cut through the maroon will cut through the yellow will cut through the purple but because these are going to be in a group and this black is outside the group the black it won't cut through the black so let me show you I've got these selected and then I'll go to let me go to group layer and I say group there we go can you see now it's cutting through everything in this group together all these layers here but when it exits out of the group it won't cut through this particular rectangle if I move this outside of this group right on top here then that will cut through the group through the other rectangle but the erase feature will cut inside a group but never out of that group but it can if it's placed right on top of everything on the layers it can cut through groups through layers and everything okay so in this case if I want this thing to cut right through again I'll just if I take this and I place it right outside the group what it's doing now the star with the erase blend mode here is cutting through whatever's in this group and cutting what uh, what's out of this group right through to the bottom so when I place this back in here again it uh, where did I place it? Oops, is it here at the bottom? I'm going to just take it right to the top here. So it's cutting now through these colors, but not through the black at the back. But the nice thing is that you can take the back and change this to whatever other colors 
you want in the setup and it will go right through so if I take this bottom layer and I move it out of place there I have and if I go and select this I have the ability now still to edit it modify it and all it's doing is cutting right through everything so you know you could have so many applications for it and it's dynamic it's non-destructive so I'm going to delete that and if I go to this ellipse this one and I want this thing to cut through right through and make this transparent so I can do that go there and say this must be erase and there we see it's now created a cut right through of this object this is all in a group but this ellipse is cutting through the yellow and through the purple uh, but of course it won't cut through the green because the green is outside that group this particular green so if I move this behind this area it will show through as green now can you see there okay now the other thing I just want to cover as I'm ending this is because this is this ellipse that we are using to cut through this transparency by making it a erase uh, um, what do we call this I keep forgetting um, uh, blend mode I think that's what it's also called here in Affinity Designer because this is a blend mode I can go to the opacity layer and drop it down and you'll notice what comes back is the cut through so it, it it changes the amount of cut through the objects right to the bottom okay so you can tweak this to have some additional value for you so if I do this and bring this green back you can see the effects that it can create so because it's on a, a blend mode you have the ability to do the opacity also and whatever other features you can add to blend modes okay so hopefully that gives you some nice creative uh, liberties uh, literally you can come and shape these things like you want to and this will be totally transparent cutouts here okay so yep use these things try different mechanisms with it um, you know use the booleans use the compound uh, this area what we call it uh, compound areas and use the erase as part of the processes that you use to modify things cut through things uh, subtract things add things to each other etc and you can increase your your creative design based on those features so hopefully this has give you some insight into using the erase blend mode and you can come up with some other brilliant uh, ideas with it so have a fantastic day and god bless